Hashem, we're going to learn a little bit something that we're doing on Shabbos. We're learning the Sefer called Cheves Achaves Halapavos, which is called Duties of the Heart, <coughs> which is a book, a very seminal book, a very important book on the path of Musar, the ethical behavior. It's uh, written by Rabbeinu Bachai Bakuda, an Andalusian, a Spanish scholar, close to in the 11th century, close to a thousand years ago or more. And it's a very fundamental text, um, predominantly, very famously in Chavis Olavavis, in this book, The Duties of the Heart, the tractate on Betachen, on trust, has become very famous, Shar Betachen. But the truth is, to understand Shar Betachen, to understand anything that he says, you have to really read slowly the entire book, because it's... It's compounded. It, he develops an idea, and based on these certain premises of the idea, we can understand a lot of the things that he talks about in terms of a person's spiritual practice, certainly with regards to what he calls the the duties of the heart. So in general, when we talk about um, these types, this genre of, this genre of, of text, which is called Sifir Musa, the books of Musa, the books, book, books of ethics that were written post-Talmudic times in the last, let's say, thousand years. You could say that there are three general styles of these types of books. Um, and this refers to, even for the Musa, there are two periods of Musa. Um, there's the, the more relatively newer phenomenon which is the new Muslim movement, which began with Risa al um, which is, we'll talk about soon, but the older Muslim movement, the older ethical texts, date back from a thousand years plus. So in these, in these texts, there are three styles of books, the three styles of Svarim. There is certain types of Svarim, certain types of texts, that the source of the text is simply from teachings of Chazal, teachings of our sages that are found in Gemara, found in Babli, Yerushalmi, in the Babylonian Talmud, Jerusalem Talmud, and it's a collection, or the Mishnah and Pergeovas, a collection of different teachings that are found from the sages, and they're organized in a very particular way, whether it's organized through the days of the week, or the days of the month, or in different chapters, based on different types of behaviors, whether it's, it's, it's humility or alacrity, and developed in that style. Classic among them is the, let's say, the Archa Tzadikim, which is a book from the Rishonim, author on Um Also classic of that genre is, for example, Reish Chachma, The Beginning of Wisdom, written by Leo Dividas, a student of the Ramak, or Moshe Katavera. And from the, the same school, belong part of that school with, with uh, Rizal, who's today's yard site is we're celebrating. So that's the 1500s. And also the Shalah HaKadosh, Shai Levi Horowitz, wrote a very classic work on, on Musar. I mean, his entire books, Shnei Luch Zabris, is basically a Musar book, uh, Musar Svarim. And it's a collection from all the Fimamar Chazal, all different teachings of the sages. And the difference between the Reish Chachma and the Shalah versus earlier text is that the Reish Chachma and the Shalah also include the quotes from the Zohar. And in the Shalal already also even includes quotes from, from Darizal. That's one type of text. So it's basically a collection of, of teachings that were collected by these great Sadiqim, these great sages, and were drawn into and collected as a text. The second style of books, of these types of svarim, these type of books, is svarim, books that are sifr musar, but they're there's a certain binyan, there's a certain structure to them, and they're trying to build up the person. So it, it develops sort of speaking about the condition of the human being from maturity to immaturity or developing certain, speaking about a certain, a certain traits. And slowly it's a progressive text that as you go further, it will build you up in terms of your ethical behavior between man and man and then eventually between man and God. So a classic example for that would be Shara Kedusha from Chaim Vital, 
um, the gates of holiness. Um, obviously, a lot based on Kabbalah. Earlier sources for that type of sex is similar to Sefer Yasha or Rabbeinu Tam, or, or the Shari Tshuva of Rabbeinu Yoyin of Gerona, um, also from the Rishonim, from Spanish Rishonim, and the, from the early commentators. And later on, a classic of such text is the book by the Ramchal, Rosh Chaim Lutzato, called Messias Yisharim, which is also based on 10 steps of what the sages talk and the Gemara talks about, Avodah that there are 10 steps, Pinchas Benyar, and slowly when you do Nikias, when, you do, when you're clean and you're, you're orderly, it brings to a higher state, to alacrity, etc., until you get to a place of humility, until you get to a place of Ruach HaKodesh, um, until the place where you can have sort of uh, divine intuition. That's another type of style of Svara, but those also based only on Sefer Kodesh, based only on texts that are found within, um, within the Talmud or within later writings of the Rishonim. This is another style. Then there's a third style, which is also about a type of binyan, a type of building up of a person, a structuring of a person. And even though mostly predominantly it's taken from Chazal, but like the Altar actually writes in the beginning of Tanya, that there's certain types of books that were taken, that were taken intellectually, which means they were great scholars that thought about certain topics, and even though there's no source for this in, in Chazal and the sages, but if it made sense, they included it in their text. And some of them even drew from from Chachmi Umis, from the other, other nations, wherever there was Chachmi Yashvagar and Taman, if there was a certain idea that was that was usable and was accessible and was translatable into into a spiritual text. It was used and it was, it was taken from other sources outside of Chazal, outside of the sages, was also drawn into, into the text. Um, later on you have in the, in the later, in the later uh, books of Musa, like if you saw Salanta or Tultur of Shlom Volpi, you already have influence or sometimes revealed and sometimes not concealed or not known from, you have from, from Benjamin Franklin all the way to Dale Carnegie. So, in the, but in the earlier Shainim, this type of Sefer, this type of book, is the Sefer of Masmi Galei Hashem by the son of the Rambam, which is also written originally in, in Arabic. And in the Sefer of Masmi Galei Hashem, Rav Avram Ram, the son of the Rambam, Rav Avram, who's a great, great, great Rishon, great scholar, great tzaddik, the son of the Rambam, the only son of the Rambam, um, and it was the Rav in Cairo, Rav in Egypt. Um, he brings down other sources, and he says these are these Hasidim, these these righteous and pious people, and clearly they're not talking about. He's drawing from other sources. The Chayvus Alavavus is one such text as well, that even though, of course, predominantly, he's drawing from Chazal, but sometimes as, as a way of metaphor or as an example or an anecdote or a story, he talks about Hasidim. And these are not these are not stories. These are not Talmudic stories. Not stories in the Gemara, but they're found in other sources. And later, a few, a few hundred years later, in the Meiri, in Chibra Tshuva, in the Meiri, one of the Menachem Meiri, one of the great sages in, of, in France, in Provence, the, the Meiri brings down these sources, and he actually quotes from where these sources are. So we know where the sources are. So this is the third types of text. This is the Chavis and Laws. Of course, we're talking about we're talking about Rebbe Chaya, which is one of the Gedolei Harishon, one of the great sages. One of the great sages, one of the great tzaddikim, trying to come alachim. Of course, they, they're like angels, and it's hard for us to talk about this. But the, from what he writes, you see clearly that in terms of metaphor or examples or anecdotes, he draws from other sources to highlight a certain idea. So this is generally what what the sefer, what this book is all about. The book is divided into ten gates. There are ten gates, and each one is develops on its next. The first, the first gate, I mean, the first, before he gets into the gates, of the ten gates, he gives a, a, and he basically explains that there are two types of mitzvahs. There are two types of commands. There's the mitzvahs, the commands that are a chavis varm, which is an obligation on the body to literally put on, to fill in on your hand or to light Shabbos candles. That which or to go into the to immerse yourself in a mikvah. This is a literal physical act that you do with your body. And then there's also Chavis Halavavis. Chavis Halavavis is the duties that 
the responsibilities that are the heart, love, love towards the neighbor, love, love of God, these are all inner, interior, inner, inner levels of consciousness and, and, and work that is done between man and himself or between man and man. Is the Chayzal Lovis. In the first, the first big chapter, is the, the Shar, the first, the first gate, is called Shar Yichud. Shar Yichud is basically the gate of unity. And what he wants to do in Shar Yichud, what he really wants to do in Shar Yichud is explain rationally, and this is what he says, that there's the mitzvah is not only to, to, uh, to believe in Hashem, but also to understand it according to a person's intelligence, according to a person's seichel, a person's intelligence. He says, He says in, cha- in chapter 3 of Shari Yehud, to know whether we have to delve into this intellectually as well, uh, or we should just believe it in faith. Um, so he says, a person has to do it according to his capacity to understand it, um, to understand the, the, crea- the, the creator, to understand that there is a creator. And this is what he does in Shari Yichud, and it's based on a few... Ba- and this is what he does in Shari Yichud, and it's based on a few basic, fundam- basic fundamental ideas that that he brings down in chapter 5, nothing creates itself. Everything that has a beginning has an end. And uh, anything that's, that's... And uh, anything that's, that's, that's a composite of different elements is something that's renewed. And he goes on to a, a great length intellectually arguing for the idea of the Mitzia Hashem, the existence of the Creator. And um, famously, famously, this is the argument. I just, I just, just a few words about this, this, this chapter. Um, the the argument that he argues is as follows. This is what the argument is for the for the existence of, of the creator. The existence of the creator comes from the creation. That there is a certain awareness, intellectual awareness, of the creation. And based on that awareness of the creation, we can understand that there is a creator. And what he does is to explain the, not so much the magnitude of creation, but the symmetry of creation. So let me, let me explain this, that in the Rambam, for example, in the Rambam's way of seeing and also this in the Moira, the way the Rambam, Echaba Adam Lavasili Rasi, how does a person come to, to love God and to be in awe of the Creator? So the Rambam, his analogy is the contem- a way of doing this is through the contemplation of creation. And through con- contemplating the creation, the magnitude of creation, the majesty of creation, and the vastness, the Marabu Masach Hashem, the vastness of creation, that evokes a certain sense of the vastness of the Creator of the infinite vastness of the creator. If the, if the world is, you know, I mean, of course, the way we understand scientifically today, the world is, the physical universe, the universe is, is or, or is, is, is trillions of, t- trillions of trillions, of, I mean, you can't even speak, of times greater than what we can think about, um, trillions of light years away, et cetera, et cetera. This is not beyond, beyond the capacity of the human brain to even understand the, the infinite, grandness of this of this creation so when a person meditates and contemplates of that they come to an understanding of the creator but in the Chavis of Vavos, in this text Rabbi Machai is arguing a different point he's arguing about the 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 beauty but more more appropriately the the um, the symmetry the harmony within creation that he's that from the from the symmetry and from the order of creation and his famous analogy is in chapter six. He brings the famous analogy of that if you see a if you see a uh, a painting that if you see a uh, a beautiful painting, then you know that from the 
the piece of art, you know that there's an artist. Certainly, so when you see the beauty of the creation, you see the symmetry and the harmony of the creation, that brings a, an awareness to the creator. Now, this is what the argument is. This is what he talks about in Shar Yechud, and in the next, in the next gate, which is called Shar Bechina, he's going to do that in terms, not so much to prove the existence of the creator, but more in terms of to, to, to speak about a person's gratitude towards the creator based on the symmetry that goes on. So all the intricate details, and I'll talk about the intricate details within time, the intricate details within space, the intricate details within your own, within your own body, how, how the different parts of the body work in, in, in coherency with each other, and how it's exactly in a balanced way, just the right, right amount that a person as a young infant uh, receives his mother's milk, and this, the exact amount how much the body is, assimilates and how much the body rejects, and everything is working in perfect harmony, in perfect symmetry, that what you see is something that's negative, but if you look at it from the full picture, actually they're, they're balancing each other out. And I'll talk about also level of consciousness, like you talk about, um, you know, memory seems to be a positive thing, memory loss seems to be something that's negative, and he'll say that, yeah, that's true generally, but if a person has only memory, if everything's in total recall, then they can never experience joy, they can never experience pain correctly, um, because the, whatever they experience in the past is always in the present, so being forgetful actually is healthy for human beings. He'll, he'll talk about all the different elements of the symmetry within the creation, and therefore a person has to be grateful, this fu thinking about the functions, functions of the body, a parent loving a child, allowing the child to grow, everything that works in coherence to allow this, this, this balanced human being, hopefully, to emerge. So that's, that's in Shara Bechina, that's in the next gate. He'll talk about it in some great length. I give a lot of different analogies for that. But that's in terms of us being grateful for the Creator. In Shara Yichud, which is the gate of unity, he is drawing uh, conclusions based on this idea that since we see the symmetry within creation, we see the harmony within creation, that should arouse within us a certain sense that there is a Creator. Now, this argument from, from creation to the creator is kind of an interesting argument and, and a little bit, a little bit, um, a little bit uh, difficult for us to understand in terms of modern man. That, um, in other words, what do we? What's what's his argument? And that's interesting. Why a lot of the, a lot of the translators never translate Shar Yichud because, the argument. Let's let's just say like this: that there's certain arguments worked in the 10th century, that don't necessarily work for the modern man in the 21st century. Not what the argument is trying to prove, but how it's proven. So. From from a painter, you know that there's from a painting, you know that there's a painter. So, this argument is saying that the fact that the world did emerge, and you see the world, that the probabilities of it, there, there is no probability in his in, in the way he phrases it. There is no probability. It's it's an impossibility that that from nothing or from no painter can come a beautiful painting. Um, in art contemporary way of thinking, the, the counter-argument to that would be that maybe it's the slightest possibility, and maybe the, 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 the possibility is one in trillions, that, you know, that everything can work, even the, even the formation of, of, let's say, an eyeball to, to work, just like a tiny part of your body, you need trillions of things to come into exact harmony and exact order, and one thing should follow the next, and everything should actually create just an eye to work, and certainly in the entire cosmos, I mean, to, to everything to work, but, and it's, it's the, the, the possibility of it emerging on its own is infinitely not, not possible, and that's obviously the ocean razor in terms of, of scientific evaluation to say that this is more true than the next, and that's the, the, we'll believe in one system more than the other, we'll subscribe to one system because it's more logical, but it's not an absolute proof, because what you could always argue is that it did happen, so maybe the probability of it happening is so infinitely impossible 
but we're living post facto, and it did happen. So that's why the, the, the arguments that he brings down in Shari Yichud um, is kind of, kind of something that needs a little bit of reevaluation in terms of what's the argument. And uh, it needs a participation, which means that when we learn the text, we have, to, we, have to, we have to learn the text as a living truth and not something that was written in the 10th century and not applicable anymore in the 21st century, but somehow le le learn the text as some type of combination between the author and the reader, between, between what, was, what was said and what is being said in the present moment. And, and the way to rephrase this or reframe this is, if you look later on in the Shari Yichud, in this Gate of Unity, he brings, he brings something else. He says that, initial mahu, he says, there was some wise people were asking, what is the creator? He says, what is God? He says, God. He says, the Eichu. And what, 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 what type of, what type of, what type is, is Hashem? He says, Godl, Melagol, a great king. Va'anuhu, and where is he? Where could Hashem be found? And he says, Bitsapiyah. Bitsapiyah is an excellent word. Bitsapiyah means a, in a type of inner seeing. So the way, the way we understand today, certainly after the revealing of Torah Sachsidus, teaching of Sachsidus, is that emuna? what is faith? Faith is not based on what we'll call a strict logical deduction that, you know, one plus one equals two, and therefore, you know, point A and point A, point B reveals point C. Um, that's not the way we understand it. There's something much more pinimia, something much more internal that's going on. That emuna, in the language of the Baal Shem Tov, is that emuna hiya dveikas. Emuna is actually dveikas, is, is unity, is feeling the connection, is being one with Hashem. That emuna, like the Rebbe Hashab writes, that emuna faith, faith is something that the neshama, our soul, our inner self, sees. Even if we don't see it ourselves physically in, in our own consciousness, our own conscious mind, there's an inner knowing, an inner seeing that's more absolute. When we really live this way, it's more absolute than actually looking at your hands. It's, it's, a, it's a very, very deep type of seeing that it's an experiential seeing of the inner soul that senses the presence of Hashem. And maybe that's what really, if we, if we go back into the Chavis Lulavis and reread it, that's what the Chayvah of is talking about. Now, we're not talking about the external observation of the world and saying, from the creation, we see that there's a creator because there's such symmetry and such organization and such order within creation, it must be that it came from a creator. And just like a, a, a painting indicates that there's a painter. And that again, we can say, well, some people can say, yes, it's true. Generally, a painter has a painting, but maybe in the off shot, and trillions of chances, it's possible that a monkey spills a, a, bottle, of, a, a bottle of paint and, uh, and, 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 a, and paints a Picasso, possible. It's uh, improbable, very improbable, trillions of times improbable, but maybe, but maybe it occurred. And if you see it, you can say, well, it did happen. That's a fact that it did happen. But on a deeper level, what he's talking about is the level of tzipia, the, the inner seeing. The inner seeing... The inner, like the, the deeper inner knowing, that is really a munam. So it doesn't come from the creation itself. We have to get to a point, the Shariyuch is trying to get to, to a point where you recognize that there's a creator and the creator creates this beautiful, harmonious, symmetrical universe, symmetrical self and symmetrical universe, where the dark and the light and the night and the day and, and memory loss and memory gain and everything's working in perfect harmony to create the best possible possibility for you to articulate who you are and to make this world a better place. That's the world that was created. But the place, but how do we get to that awareness that there is the, that creator? It's not from the creation itself, but it's something from deeper inside. It's, a, it's an inner type of seeing. It's an inner seeing of the soul seeing. It's experiential. A person through prayer or through, through, through contemplation, through, through, through inner inwardness, through a person going inward, and really opening themselves up to that type of experience, they actually experience the tzapia, they're seeing the presence of Hashem, the presence of God. They're seeing with an inner type of knowing, and because they experience that 
on a very deep soul level, they experience that unity. And that experience, experience that inner experience, is, is the soul seeing it, which is even more real than when the physical body sees it. Then that brings you to a point of then, from that place, looking at the creation and seeing the beauty and the harmony within creation. And then, because of that, to draw, the, to draw from that inspiration, from that, from that new type of seeing, which allows you to see the world in a different way, from that inner type of seeing that allows you to see the world from that place, demands from you to be in service and to connect with Hashem. And that's really what the first shar is talking about, the first gate, and which is shar yichud, the first gate of unity, and also the shar abchina, which is the shar of to show the gate that shows of all different types of 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 the harmony and symmetry that we find within creation.